mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I just walked, uh, walked in there and I didn't get all of the, the ashes off of my hand. I've still got some on my finger. And I looked in the mirror in there and I see that Pastor Jacobson did, I think, I can't see it now. I think I've got a pretty black cross on my forehead. It must mean that I'm the worst sinner here. We talked about this a little bit at faculty devotions this morning, and I was uh, saying, you know, when I'm putting ashes on people's foreheads, it, it sticks, the ashes stick to varying degrees, and maybe that means that the people that have darker crosses are worse sinners, but just joke about that. Uh, all of us should have black crosses, and, and, and some of us have more oil in our skins, and some skins, one skin, uh, some of us uh, have hair that knocks it down and things, but, but we've all got these crosses, and, and and maybe you'll forget about the cross, and, and you'll go to the bathroom later today, and you'll see in the mirror. Maybe, like me, you'll get tired this afternoon, and you'll put your hand down here to think about something, and, oh, what's that? And you'll see a cross on your hand. Maybe you'll be at the hospital. I, I made a hospital visit last year, and one of the nurses said, um, it's, yeah, you ha yeah it's, it's Ash Wednesday. And so maybe somebody will point it out at Walmart or somewhere that you've got this cross on your forehead, or maybe you'll just go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning and see a cross on your pillow, but usually the ashes flake off throughout the day. Well, re remember what, what I or, or Pastor Jacobson just said to you, and maybe this was the first time you've ever had ashes put on your, most of you, your forehead or your hand. What, what is it, what are those words that we say? Somebody, somebody over here, what, Tyler, what do we say? That's right, so the first thing was remember, remember, from dust you have come and to dust you shall return. Remember, from dust you have come, and, and to dust you shall return. Remember God's word. Remember God's... Is this a promise? Does this make you feel good? It doesn't make me feel good. I know this morning Mrs. Severson said it didn't make her, right? It didn't, didn't make you feel good. Uh, and here we are, and some of you are saying thank you when I'm putting these, these ashes on you. And, well, there, there is gospel in there. We'll get to that. But uh, you remember when God said this, from dust you have come and to dust you shall return? Uh, so, some of my friends from the school, when, when did God say these words? Because God said these words, remember, from dust you have come and to dust you shall return Yes, behind Mrs. Schaefer. He said it in the beginning, toward the very beginning. He said it in Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. God said these words, and you know who he said these words to? Tyler? He said them to Adam and Eve. Yeah, he said, them, he said these words to Adam, uh, the, the dirt guy or the dust guy. And, and next week, Pastor Jacobson is going to preach on this text from Genesis chapter 3. But, but you remember... Um, at the creation, God, God takes dirt or dust, and he, I mean, there's all these, these little pieces of, of dirt or dust, and it's hard to keep track of it all, and he, and he molds them together, and then is he done after he forms this guy, or what else does he do? What else does he do? He breathes, breathes the breath of, of life into him, the spirit, and so human beings are body and soul, and there's Adam, all these little separate parts, one thing, body and soul, and, and, and he's perfect, and then he has Eve, his, his, his perfect help me, and there they are, and the two people are joined together in one flesh, everything is just as it should be, and then... And then they sin. And, and then they go away from doing what God wants them to do, and, and, and Adam and Eve hide. And, and God says, where are you? But he knows where they are. And, and, and they're afraid, and then God says, this curse. Remember, from dust you have come, and to dust you shall return. And, and, and then after that, Adam and Eve, their offspring, they, they still have the same problems. They're still running away from God. And so remember the first child of Adam and Eve? There, there was a guy, what was his name? That first somebody... Uh, right here, what was his name? Cain. Yeah, Cain, the first guy was Cain, and Cain had a brother, his name? Abel. And how did things work out for Cain and Abel? Well, they, they, I don't know if they fought a lot, but they had one fight, right? And maybe it was one-sided. What happened? Cain killed Abel. Yeah, and, and Cain killed Abel, and, and because they're, they're sinful creatures, and they, they, sh they shouldn't do this, and they do it anyway. And then, and then Cain, he feels really bad. He should not have done this, and he feels so guilty. And then God comes, and God puts a mark on him, and God has mercy on him. 
because this isn't the way it's supposed to be. And so today we come and we, we get these ashes on our forehead and they are messy and some of us have more or less, but it doesn't matter how many ashes you have on you, you're 100% a sinner. And, and, and we come together and we, and we do this thing um, where, where, where there's nothing else we can really say to God and so we have this, this prayer, it's called a litany. And we had this litany for Ash Wednesday. And so open up, somebody open up, or somebody, everybody can do this. Open up your bulletins and look in the inside of the front cover. We had this litany for Ash Wednesday. And look basically what, what you all or what we said. There were five different things that we said. What was the first thing that we said to God? You can say it all at once. Somebody, oh, somebody over here. What was the first thing we said? Noah. Have mercy. God, there's nothing else we can say. Just have mercy. We screwed up. We got nothing that we can do. We can't put ourselves back together. Have mercy on us. And then what was the next thing that we said? We said, have mercy. And then we said the next thing, Gabriel. Spare us. Don't give us the punishment that we deserve. And then the next thing that we said was what? Somebody over here is not putting their hand up. Just yell it out. Help us. Yeah. Have mercy on us. Spare us. Help us. Did we say hear us in there also? Yeah, we missed that. We said hear us, God. We don't want to just shout out to nothing. Hear us. And then we said the last thing before. We said a couple have mercies at the end, but we said one more thing. What did we say? We said amen. That was the last thing. It's going to be so. Remember what we said? We said, we said give us peace or grant us peace. Make things the way that they're supposed to be. It, well, uh, the psalm that we had for today, that, that the litany is really based off of, in some sense, is, is what King David prays to God. When it, what, what are the first words of Psalm 51 that we read together? Somebody tell me what those first words are. Have mercy, yeah. Uh, remember this, what, because, because this psalm that David prays, is, is there's a specific reason that he's praying, God, have mercy on me. Remember this, it comes up in 2 Samuel. God, uh, David cries out to God, have mercy on me. Remember why he specifically did this? He prayed this prayer. There was something that happened that was not good at all. Remember what happened? All, uh, Dawson, Remember? Well, there was a part where he was in the lion's den. He probably wishes he was still in the lion's den. This was worse than that. That was Daniel, too. But that, that's, uh, he did fight a lion. He, I think he, I can't, it's all mixed up. But that's not what I was thinking of, but it was good. There is a lion in the Bible. Uh, <laughs> well, he did get chased. That's Psalm 3 where he talks about that, by getting chased by his son, and that's not good either. There was a part about Goliath. We're thinking of all these good things. This is a bad thing about David. David, uh, David was up on top. He had the highest house in the land. And he's looking down, and he sees this lady and her name, and she's taking a bath, and he's, wow, she's pretty pretty. She's pretty pretty. Remember what the, her name was, the pretty pretty lady? Bathsheba, yeah. And so then he says, well, I think Bathsheba really, even though she's Uriah's wife, should be maybe she's kind of special to me. And the next thing, they, they did some stuff they shouldn't do. And, and then, so what happens is David's, pastor basically comes to him or the guy who is coming to speak on behalf of God his name is know his name Nathan yeah that's it Nathaniel would be yeah so Nathan comes and he says David I'm gonna tell you this story about this guy who uh is like the, the master of the house and he has all these sheep and then he's got a servant he's only got one sheep and it's like the family pet and David says uh and, and he says so um the guy who has all the sheep takes the sheep from the guy who has only one sheep. And David says, that's not right. That guy should die. And then remember what Nathan said to him next? Douglas? He said, you're that guy. And so he, he held up the mirror to David. He said, David, look in the mirror. You're that guy. And how did David feel? You know what he said next? What did he say? How did he feel? He felt terrible. He felt guilty. Probably his face turned red, and maybe he thinks I could die here. And the only thing he could say, and then we see what David prays to God is, prays to God is, have mercy on me. Okay, well, I thought this sermon was going to be about, um, about mirrors, and it is, but not the way I thought it was going to go. See, I thought it was going to be about, about us grabbing the mirror, and we look in the mirror, and we're so ugly that what happens to the mirror? 
We, yeah, I thought it was, well, the mirror's going to break, and then we're going to pick up all the pieces of the mirror. And, and I kept I'm trying to work this out, and I just figured this out like an hour ago. Uh, I thought that, and I was going to pick up, I was going to sweep up the mirror, okay? <laughs> but that's not the right sermon. It's the other way around. Y- you see, when we grab the mirror and look in the mirror... And, and see, we, we have this thing, we talk about God's, God's law has three functions. What are those three functions of the law? A curb, a mirror, and a guide. And so God's law is a mirror, and when we, we, we just recited the Ten Commandments, and, and when we look at ourselves <laughs> against God's law, do we break his law? I mean, do, are we able to break God into a thousand pieces? No. You know what breaks into a thousand pieces or even more? Us. Us. See, it, it's, it's, not that, it's not that we look at the mirror and break the mirror. It's that the mirror shows us our sin. The mirror is God's law. The mirror is God and his holiness and righteousness. And we look at that and we flake off. Maybe one piece at a time. But, but the end result is that at, at, at the end of everything... Our sin will kill us. And we can't put ourselves back together. And it's not just one. I mean, one sin maybe could infect us enough, but it's not just like you can, uh, you look in the mirror and only a little piece of you breaks off. Every time you look in the mirror and see your sin, we are just broken. God, help us. Have mercy on us. Hear us. Save us. And we're completely broken. And God then, only God can do this. Maybe God brings out the thing. The, this thing's called a broom. And he sweeps it all up. And he puts us back together. And God washes us clean. He does that with blood. With Jesus' blood. He did that on the cross. The cross that you see in the mirror. And, and, and see, we, we have this thing where we say, Remember, from dust you have come, and to dust you shall return. And that's a pretty general statement. But it's a lot of specific sins that maybe come up in that. But Jesus didn't only die for one specific sin that you and I have. Not just one specific sin. He died for all of them. And then God, after we're broken by his law, he doesn't leave us there. He cleans us up. He, he, he puts us back together and he does it all in Jesus You see, Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. Jesus is called the new Adam, the Adam that didn't sin, that didn't break apart. The Adam that conquered sin and death. The Adam that he was meant to be. And so when you look at that cross on your forehead or on your hand or you see it on somebody else, or you see it a week from today or a year from today or... Ten years from today, you see, this is where God has put us back together. This is where God hears our prayer. This is the mercy of God, the love, the compassion, all in Jesus. So this Ash Wednesday and each Ash Wednesday, when we're broken into pieces, remember that we are holy His, holy Jesus, completely His, and we are made holy because of Him. So I think that's how this sermon is supposed to go.